Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today we're going to be talking about the nightclub business in Grand Theft Auto Online. The nightclub is regarded as the best overall business in Grand Theft Auto Online. However, getting it to run as efficiently as possible is quite a task, especially for early game players. In this guide, I will show you the ins and outs of the nightclub business, a full breakdown of how it works, the intricacies of running it, how to manage it efficiently, and finally show you just how much money you can actually make by owning it. Before we get into the video, drop a like if you enjoy, dislike if you don't, subscribe if you're new, and let's go ahead and get started. To begin working with the nightclub, you will first need to purchase one, and you can find them available on the foreclosures website underneath the money and services tab on your phone's internet browser. First of all, we need to talk about location. Location is important with this business, but not as important as some other businesses like the bunker and CEO cargo warehouses, for example. I'd recommend getting something centrally located in the city. However, getting the nightclub closer to Vinewood Boulevard isn't a bad idea because you will be closer to nearly all of the sale missions. However, I personally use the Mission Row nightclub it has good cover for entering and exiting the business, access to the main highway directly out of Los Santos, and it's centrally located so it's close to the airport, which you will have to go to for certain missions involving the nightclub. It goes for $1,440,000 as the starting price before upgrades, and I would absolutely avoid anything more southern on the map than the Mission Row nightclub. I think anything lower down is just simply out of the way for 95% of nightclub activities that you will be partaking in. Now, when you go to spec out your nightclub, you will have access to a lot of different renovations that you can do. The only one that actually matters for you to purchase are the extra basement levels. Get as many as you possibly can at the start. Now, if you don't have enough money for all the floors right away, you can always add them at a later date. The amount of floors that you have directly impacts the total amount of storage you have for illicit cargo that can be sourced in the nightclub basement. The more storage you have, the more you can hold, which means the more goods you can sell at one time. Now, there are additional upgrades that you can do here, like adding extra garage floors and things like that, but none of that stuff really matters when it comes to actually just making money. Now, for the nightclub setup, once you've purchased it, you will have to visit it and you'll have to go through some tedious missions to get started, like picking up a DJ from the airport, which turns into a plane crashing in Blaine County, and you will have to go and pick up the DJ and take them back to your nightclub. Then after this, you'll have to go and steal the festival bus from out in the desert, which you will use in turn to max out your initial popularity. Once you've completed these missions, your nightclub setup is complete. Next up, we have upgrades, and you can access these from the office computer in your nightclub. The nightclub, like most other businesses in GTA Online, has upgrades that can increase the efficiency of your business operations. Similar to the bunker and MC businesses, the nightclub has three main upgrades, equipment, staff, and security. The equipment upgrade is going to run you $1,425,000, and the equipment upgrade doubles the speed of accruing goods in the nightclub basement by your warehouse technicians. This will be essential as you get further into the business. Next up, we have the staff upgrade for $475,000. This slows down the nightclub popularity loss, allowing you to have to do less popularity missions. This comes in very handy and directly allows you to make significantly more money. And of course, finally, we have the security upgrade coming in at $695,000. This reduces the likelihood of nightclub basement raids. Don't purchase this upgrade if you don't have all floors of the nightclub basement yet because it won't happen. However, once you have all the floors and technicians and the businesses to go with them, 100% you will need to buy this upgrade. So if you got a ton of money at the start, you might as well get it. However, if you're running a little bit low on funds, don't be too concerned with the security upgrade just yet. With the nightclub, you'll get access to two garage floors by default when you purchase it. One of these floors will house the nightclub sale mission delivery vehicles, which you can purchase through Warstock Cash and Carry. You will get the Speedo Custom by default and for free, but you can upgrade to the Mule Custom and the Pounder Custom. However, you can skip purchasing the Mule Custom entirely by not purchasing it and only purchasing the Pounder Custom instead. The Pounder Custom is big enough that you can do all the sale missions that the Speedo Custom cannot do, meaning you don't even need the Mule Custom to begin with. The Mule is also a slow piece of shit, so the Pounder is better performance-wise as well. The Pounder also has more defensive measures, so you'll get griefed less easily driving it. Now, you can also upgrade each of these vehicles individually to make them better for the sale missions by putting on engine upgrades, turbo transmission, armor, armor plating, 
and also some crazy defensive measures like machine guns on certain vehicles as well, which is pretty cool. On the other floor that you're going to get with the purchase of your nightclub, you will be able to house the Terror Bite. Now, the Terror Bite is a very useful vehicle overall. It allows you to store and upgrade an Oppressor Mark II, as well as launch resupply missions for most of your businesses, and it gives you access to exclusive free mode missions that you can use to make some extra cash quickly. You don't need a Terror Bite right away, but once your business is fully set up and you're a little bit more established, Established, I would definitely recommend getting the Terror Bite because it is just generally very useful and it's also the third most armored vehicle in the entire game. Next up, we have to talk about nightclub management. Now, this is where things can get really confusing really fast. This is what causes a lot of players to tap out of the nightclub business, but don't worry, I'm going to explain this in detail. The nightclub management screen can be accessed upstairs in your nightclub office or downstairs in any of the basement levels. The home screen allows you to see basic info like how much money your nightclub has made, as well as how much popularity your nightclub currently has. It also allows you to see the capacity of each good type in the nightclub basement. Following this, we have the nightclub management screen. This allows you to see the statistics of your nightclub, as well as launch popularity missions. Now, I don't recommend doing popularity missions because I have some great ways to increase popularity without having to do much of anything, and we will talk about those in just a little bit. Next up, we have the resident DJ screen. This allows you to see your current DJ as well as the other ones that you can book. You can initially book another DJ for $100,000 and then you go and get them from the airport and deliver them back to your nightclub. However, once you've done this once, your rebooking fee will go down to only $10,000, and every time that you switch DJs, you will increase popularity significantly. The first time you do it for $100,000, you will increase the popularity by a lot, and every switch after that for $10,000 will increase the popularity by two ticks, or half of one of the five bars. Switching the DJs upstairs in the nightclub will trigger a cutscene, however, this can be skipped by switching DJs while in the nightclub basement. Next up, we have the Warehouse Management tab. This is the most confusing of all of the nightclub computer screens. This is where you will hire technicians that will passively source goods into your nightclub basement through other businesses that you already own or that you don't own right now, but that you can purchase later. You will have one technician that comes with your nightclub, the other four will need to be hired, and this will cost a total of about $880,000. You can then click on the picture of your available technicians, and then click on the type of good that you want them to source for you. The types of goods that you can source depend on the other businesses that you own in GTA Online. For example, the best illicit good that you can get them to source is South American Imports. For this, you will need to own the Coke Lockup through the Motorcycle Club. Pharmaceutical research is available by owning the Meth Lab, also through the Motorcycle Club. Cargo and shipments are available by either owning a CEO office and CEO cargo warehouse or a hangar. Sporting goods are available by owning a bunker. Cash creation is available by owning a counterfeit cash factory. Organic produce is available by owning a weed farm. And finally, printing and copying is available by owning a document forgery office. You can source up to five different good types, and once you have all technicians and own the corresponding businesses, the amount of goods that you can source is dependent on how many basement levels you added on the renovation screen that we talked about earlier. Next up, we have the Sell Goods tab. This is where you are going to go to begin sale missions with the nightclub basement. You can sell your total amount of goods that you've accrued, or you can fill special orders and gain a 10% sale bonus for completing these special orders. This will, of course, mean that you're gonna have to do more sale missions, so in the long run, in my opinion, it's not really worth it, but if you wanna try it out, don't be afraid to. Next up, we're gonna talk about how much money the upstairs of the nightclub makes. Through the legitimate business of the nightclub, as long as popularity is full, you will make $50,000 every 48 minutes of real time or every in-game day. To keep popularity full, as I mentioned earlier, you can cycle nightclub DJs back and forth. This will cost you 100 grand initially, and it will increase popularity a lot more. However, after this, of course, it will only increase by two ticks out of a bar and there are five total bars. So it will increase by 10% of your total popularity for $10,000 every single time you switch it. And you can switch back and forth over and over again to max out your popularity. However, Rockstar have now added the ability to do special missions marked by blue objectives when you enter into the nightclub. There will be a VIP mission where you will have to drive a VIP home very slowly. This will pay you $10,000 and increase your popularity by five ticks or 25%. There's also the Kick Out Troublemaker event, which will be marked by a small blue dot on the minimap. 
This mission requires you to walk up, interact and kick them out of the nightclub, and you will get a very short, maybe 10 second long cutscene. This also pays $10,000 and increases the popularity by five ticks or 25%. However, the Kick Out Troublemaker mission takes way less time than the VIP mission. And the cool thing is that you can manipulate the game to only give you the Kick Out Troublemaker event by entering the nightclub in passive mode. Doing this will prevent the VIP mission from spawning, and this is a really easy way to keep your popularity high and give yourself $10,000 every time you do it. My strategy for keeping nightclub popularity up is to make sure that my popularity is maxed out initially, then I leave and go and do other business activities in free mode. Once I see that $100,000 is in my nightclub safe in the bottom left, I head back over, enter passive mode before I enter, and go into my nightclub. Then I do the kick out troublemaker mission, get 10 grand, collect my safe money, and leave the nightclub again, and rinse and repeat this and you'll be making a killing from your nightclub business. Now the nightclub safe max is out at $250,000, so you can actually leave the money in the safe for longer and collect it every two times if you want to. This also means that you can AFK with the nightclub pretty effectively and come back to $250,000 every time after about six hours of waiting. Of course, this does mean that you'll have to do a few nightclub popularity missions to get back up to making 50 grand every in-game day, but it is a good way to make money AFK. Overall, the legitimate business of the nightclub is very worth doing, and it is some of the most passive money you can make in GTA Online. Next up, we gotta talk about the nightclub basement money. The nightclub basement is arguably just as good to make money as the nightclub, however, it will need to be fully upgraded in order to be competitive with the upstairs of the nightclub. The best good types to source are, in order, South American imports. This will make $270,000 in 1,200 minutes or 20 hours. Keep in mind, this sounds pretty bad, but if you compare it with four other things that you can also be doing at the exact same time, it gets a little bit better. Pharmaceutical research is the second best thing for $229,500 in 20 hours again, or 1200 minutes. Cash creation, again, which is counterfeit cash, is gonna run you $189,000 in another 20 hours or 1200 minutes. Cargo and shipments is the next best thing you can do with the CEO cargo warehouse or the hangar. It's gonna pay $500,000 over the course of 3500 minutes, and with sporting goods or the bunker, it's gonna pay $500,000 over 4,000 minutes. With the nightclub basement, it's best to sell after 1,200 minutes or 20 hours, or basically as soon as South American imports is full. It's not worth switching technicians to the other two good types in organic produce or printing and copying and waiting for those to be full. Profit per hour is the highest when you just sell once South American imports are full and just rinse and repeat that process no matter what your cargo and shipments is at and no matter what your sporting goods is at. You can also fill your nightclub basement a little bit faster if you want to by calling Johan and requesting nightclub goods or by completing free mode business battles and delivering crates back to the nightclub. This won't fill it up very quickly, however it can help and it certainly will make you a little bit more money a little bit faster by doing these rather than not doing them. Now when it comes to your sale missions with the nightclub basement, you have three different possible vehicles as we said earlier, but if you listen to what I said, hopefully you only have two possible vehicles in the Speedo Custom and the Pounder Custom. The Speedo Custom can be used for smaller sale missions with less than 89 total crates. If you have the Mule Custom, which I hope you don't, it will be used for sale missions with 90 to 179 crates. And the Pounder Custom can be used for missions with 180 total crates or more. However, if you don't have the Mule Custom, the Pounder Custom will be substituted in for the Mule at 90 plus total crates in your sale mission. As I stated earlier, each of the delivery vehicles can be upgraded significantly with performance modifications as well as defensive measures like top or front mounted miniguns, missile launchers in some cases, and heavy armor and sale missions will only ever be one sale vehicle, even if you have multiple people in your organization, so this is really good. Additionally, you can also sell in public lobbies to take advantage of the high demand bonus, which will pay 2.5% more money for each player in the lobby, maxing out at 20 players, or a total of a 50% sale bonus. This will help to make you significantly more money per sale mission, and if you do elect to do this, registering as a CEO beforehand and popping Ghost Organization as soon as you get into the truck, as well as going off the radar with Lester if necessary, is always a good idea. The longest sale mission you'll encounter with this business is probably the one that ends in Polito Bay. Every other one should take less than 10 minutes in total to complete. Now the only bummer with the whole business is the fact that the nightclub basement sale missions have a bit of a hiccup with them. Gay Tony takes a 10% laundering cut as his fee for allowing you to operate the illegal nightclub basement 
as part of the nightclub business. However, this is only for the first million dollars. So if you do a sale mission for $1,500,000, you will only pay Tony a maximum of $100,000. So I guess that's good. At least it's capped at $100,000 as the maximum amount that gay Tony can take from you for a nightclub sale mission. Now, how much money can you actually make with the nightclub business with the nightclub basement combined with the upstairs of the nightclub? The nightclub basement as efficiently as possible, sourcing the best good types will make you $50,496 per hour. Running the nightclub and keeping the popularity max out will make you $62,500 per hour of real time. Now, it only makes you 50 grand every 48 minutes, but if you factor in the extra 12 minutes of time, that's another $12,500. So that's where that number comes from. This means that the nightclub at maximum efficiency, not including business battles or getting paid for kicking out troublemakers, will make you about $113,000 per hour of real time. And keep in mind that this is almost entirely passive money, which is pretty crazy. Now pairing this business, which is largely AFK based with more active businesses can yield massive profits over time. The nightclub is easily the best business in the game while also being the hardest to initially set up. High risk, high reward. It is a great business and I really hope that this guide helped to make it easier to understand for you. If it did, if you learned something, a like is of course appreciated, if not dislike. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.